Tim. Yeah, Jorg, the, is this new system going to open up the compatibilities for like the photo things like TIFFs and GIFs beyond the JPEGs? Uh, yes, definitely. The same that we have achieved for the video is also for the photos, also for audio files. Linux will read most of these files and uh, then we can automatically all read in these files. So this is just a huge advantage for us in file and interface compatibility. That'll go for the uh, AVI files too, so that mm -hmm. that will be more compatible for transfer with FireWire and, and Ethernet? Yes, many of these files are already AVI. So in my video archive, if you see RD Buffet, that's also an AVI file that was just playing back here. So, so you can create AVI files. Also in exporting, if I go into exporting this, uh, it's going to take a while until it, that's a somewhat slow USB stick. It always takes 10 seconds or so before it's recognized. Okay, now if I go into options, then you see I can now also save them as a file. So if I don't want to save this as Motorola, but if I want to save this as um, a, no, well, Apple will be. What I have is I have a PC file selection, and there is an MPEG that's saved as an AVI. There is an, M an H.264 that's saved as an MP4. Um, there is 3GP. Lots of cell phones will only accept 3GP files. Um, then you can also just extract the audio and save it as MP3. So we support a ton of different file formats already. And uh, you will find all these file formats in, uh, in, in, in real life. Uh, so we're trying to be compatible with all of them. Okay. Now can you imagine how hard it is if you have a, a PC editing system and you output a file to assemble a file that will play on the portable device of your customer? You be, these devices are extremely picky. I can tell you that we've invested many, many development hours into finding the right compatible video and audio formats. Um, I, as far as I can tell, there's no other editing system out there that allows you to directly pick a device and under, under the na name of the maker and then the model number that does that for you. So it saves you a ton of time. I think we're almost at the end of the question and answers hour. Chat is approaching. Are you trying to grab the mic? Am I gentle enough? <laughs> Please, thank you. I, uh, it, again, just based on what I saw in the other room, but more of what I'm seeing here too, uh, both as a person employed by the company, but also as a, an end user of the product, um, you and your team have done a phenomenal job and, you know, I think the rest of the community is going to be blown away by what we're beginning to see here. And those of you who spend time with Jorg in the other room over the next couple of days, just to, to kind of distill some of the, the phenomenal things that he's presented here. And, and I'm blown away, as Candy mentioned, not only do you get the new Bogart SE, the ability to edit directly in your H HDV mode, but all the other capabilities. To me, what's phenomenal is, is the ability to go in your video and auto, audio archives and the photo archives. And as Tim pointed out, to be able to bring in virtually any other file format of photo, any other file format of audio that you bring in off of CD, that you bring in off of your USB stick, inputs and outputs, and the ability to export. I think this is going to be another you know, historical footnote in terms of technology for the ability, uh, for the ease of use, because I've gone through some of the other uh, PC and Mac applications and tried to figure out, OK, you know, I had to go through several forums online to figure out what's the best Kodak and format to export this because I want to upload it to YouTube. Well, as you saw just a minute ago, in the menu structure that he and his development team have created, they've specified if you're going to use this device, this is what you use. And again, that's an incredible, incredible feature. So thank you again very much, Jörg, for bringing this over.